Welcome Future Divers, I'm Sean. I am the master trainer and owner here at Music City Scuba. So welcome. Today we're gonna to be discussing the Recreational Dive Planner, or for short, the RDP. These are also known as the Repetitive Dive Planners. Um, this math has been proven over hundreds of years, as I'll kind of brief you in on, uh, to, and developed in order to keep us safe in recreational diving. Um, they're very reliable, proven, like I said, for hundreds of years. So these are here to make sure that if you follow these rules, you'll have years of safe, happy diving. Here at Music City Scuba, we do highly recommend that all new divers especially uh, really venture into purchasing and using a computer. Uh, it is a valuable piece of safety equipment for every diver. Uh, it, it adds a lot, it, it takes away a lot of the worry and anxiety of diving at depth. And uh, there again, just another bulletproof way of making sure you're gonna have years of safe, happy diving. So let's go over some of the options you have with that first. And then after that, we're gonna tear into the math. Uh, even if you do get a computer, um, we really do firmly believe you ought to understand what that computer's doing for you along with all of the other bells and whistles and features that it has to keep you safe. But you should understand the foundation of exactly what that computer's doing for you. All right, so let's have a look. Let's discuss some of your options out there nowadays. Um, compute, with the onset of computers and the evolution of them into the industry, there really is pretty much a computer that can fit anyone's budget that wants to get into recreational diving as a hobby or sport. Um, like cars nowadays, they all do the fundamental basics, which is, you know, drive down the road. They're all going to calculate um, your saturation time underwater to keep you safe. Um, but they can all have bells and whistles. It really just depends on how luxurious of a drive or dive you want to have. Um, with that said, we have some very basic models. Uh, some even go into the console of your regulator, uh, along with like a pressure gauge. Um, these, which you wear just like a wristwatch, a little bit larger, do all of the basics uh, as far as calculating the math. However, they do have some features that your math can't do for you. Uh, they're gonna time your dive like they should. Um, you know, um, do your NDL, your no decompression limit, which we'll get into when we get into the math. Uh, but on top of that, they have alarms to tell you uh, when you're going up too fast, so rapid ascent. They have some options in order to let you know uh, when you've reached your saturation limit and it's time to start heading to the surface. Um, they will count down your safety stop for you. They'll do your surface interval when you're up on the boat taking a break uh, so that you can enjoy the, the discussions going on about what all you seen on this great dive and um, and and um, enjoy hydrating having snacks and getting ready for the next dive uh, they will count down your time to fly you can set alarms on some of them um, to reach a maximum depth if you don't want to go past that so with the onset of so many more families going into the sport together, uh, as a parent myself, uh, it's a really good comforting piece of safety equipment to have on my child as well if they're diving with me so that I can also enjoy the environment and not constantly having to check for them and, you know, uh, make sure that they're following the rules as well. So uh, with that said, like I said, these are some very basic models. They're gonna do all of that. And then we start getting into computers that might have a little bit more bells and whistles for you. So I don't know about you guys out there, but I like toys. So uh, uh, anything that can enhance my diving, hey, I'm all for. So something like this, we have the uh, Wisdom 4 here, which is a new computer that's out on the market. Now this actually does go into a hose and goes into your regulator as a, a normal console would. Um, but this one, on top of all of the other safety features, uh, has for example a digital dive log that you can Wi-Fi to your phone. It'll fill it out in the app uh, as well as put like a GPS marker on Google Maps that'll give you the GPS coordinates of where the dive was that you can share in that dive log with your family and friends. Uh, you can add pictures and videos and all sorts of stuff. So, um, and then this one's built with a compass right on to it. And, you know, you can get them with rechargeable batteries and, you know, just really 
add in a lot more of the fun as well as graphing the dive you can see your air consumption over the dive in a graph uh, you can watch you know exactly how deep you went shallow deep and so forth understand that computers really kind of extend your dive because as you're going to learn when we start doing this math um, we have to log our dive in an analog way by the deepest part of the dive. So therefore, we do lose some bottom time. But we have to be conservative for safety. We can't stop halfway through a dive and redo our calculations because we come up 10 feet. Um, that's just not realistic. So these adjust and do so many equations per second that we just can't do to adjust for depth per foot. Uh, to where you're also going to learn that we have to go pretty much by 10 foot increments when we're doing it with the old style math way. Um, and then we start getting into even more bells and whistles on top of all of these little goodies. Uh, the watch that I dive on, uh, this is the newest one out, which is the 2.0 version. This is the Amphos Air by Sherwood. And with this one, it is actually Bluetooth to where there's a transmitter that just goes into your regulator where your console would screw into in the high pressure uh, port. And then uh, it transmits all of that data to the watch, eliminating the need for a console and an extra hose. Uh, which we're always looking to streamline ourselves underwater. Um, it makes us work less. Air consumption can go down. Um, you just don't want to have anything on you that would be considered drag, and a whole long hose underwater is going to create drag. Uh, not to mention, it's one less thing to hunt for. As I'm diving along, I can just kind of, with my hands crossed out, look down and see even my air. Now, with these models, uh, the Bluetooth models, you, it even analyzes and reads the air left in your tank so that you can gauge that. Uh, you don't need that air console um, in order to know how much air you have left underwater. So there are just, you know, so many different features out there now. They're evolving all the time to add more. Uh, they're just a great way to keep you safe, uh, take the worry out of diving, and let you really enjoy your environment instead of the old way of where you had to stay in your head half the time in order to watch a stopwatch, watch your gauge, you know, so forth. There's no alarms. The only alarm is your eyes uh, when you check. So these are valuable safety tools for you to use over your diving career, and we do highly recommend them considering nowadays they start as cheap as, you know, $199, and you can go up into the thousands if you really want to, but you don't need to. They're all going to do the fundamental basics to keep you safe, uh, along with some things that these charts just are not going to be able to do. So uh, with that, let's move on and just dive right into this math and have some fun, right? Okay, are we ready for the math? Yeah, we're ready for this. It's not going to be too bad. Just a little algebra, a little physics, um, but I'm going to make it as simple as I can. So um, with that said, I want to make you give you a visual way to, to kind of fully understand what's happening to your body underwater and uh, as well as what this graph and this math uh, is accomplishing. So with that said, what we're going to understand is Meet Scuba Bob here. He's going to help me demonstrate. Um, we've discovered, you know, with all of that science that I give you the brief history on, that the body could be um, measured underwater in saturation in using um, compartments, which you're going to understand is what we're going to call as pressure groups when we get to our chart over here. Um, but for a visual reference, understand that we're dividing the body up into compartments. All right. There we go. And they are lettered A for the least amount to Z fully full. <laughs> right? Um, to give you a basic way of understanding it. Now, what this does, what this math will do for you and what your computer will do for you is as we dive over at, at a depth over a particular amount of time, it is going to fill those compartments um, to log how much saturation we've gained of nitrogen. So, in the most simplest way, um, you do a dive to X amount of feet, right? And you do it for a particular amount of time to where you fill up with an overabundance amount of nitrogen that you didn't start with, okay? So Scuba Bob is saturated up, and we're going to say over this dive that Bob here uh, filled up to a N. 
Now, that don't mean a lot yet, but bear with me. We're going to get there. These are the building blocks um, that we're making a strong foundation to build on. So he dove and accumulated enough to be considered full to the compartment of N. Now, Bob comes up and he wants to do another dive. However, the problem with that is, is that he is no longer a fresh diver. So unless he stays out of the water for a long amount of time, which the dive boat's not going to stick around while everybody sleeps and rests and all of that, um, he's going to have to have a logical way in order to log the saturation time that he has left. Okay. So while he's out on the boat, he is bleeding off that excess amount, but only to a certain degree determined by how long he stays out of the water. So um, Bob here, now, I'm going to quick draw his body back in because he feels kind of nude. Um, but Bob here has bled down to where now he's in a D. Okay. Now, what we can do with this math is take D and translate it back over into a corresponding time in order to understand residual, the residual amount of nitrogen left in his body. We can add that to the next dive and subtract it from the allowable time at the next depth in order to calculate how much time we actually have left to dive at that depth. It will not be the full scale of time he could if he was a fresh diver. So we have to have a way in order to calculate that residual amount that's left over in the body. So Bob understands that he's went to an end, he got out of the water, he bled excess nitrogen off down to the amount of a D. Now he finds out that D corresponds over into 20 minutes. Well, his next dive to a particular depth, we'll pick 50 feet, for example, um, he knows he has 80 minutes at that depth. However, that's 80 fresh minutes. That is not 80 minutes any time. So at 50 foot, he can stay 80 minutes. However, he has enough nitrogen saturation left over in his body that it, it, it equates over into 20 minutes of time left, meaning that he already has 20 minutes gone, so he would subtract that. And then Bob finds out, well, on this next time, I can actually stay 60 minutes because 60 plus 20 would equal the total of 80 allowable minutes at 50 foot. So that's a short, brief understanding in a, a most layman way of, of uh, making you understand what these calculations do for you. Right, and why they keep you safe. Because we know that we would cross over into saturation diving or have to do deco stops if we overstayed more than 80 minutes. He doesn't want to do that. He wants a NDL, no decompression limit, which is 60 because he used up 20 from the previous dive and that's what they do. Now, so that you have an understanding of what is happening in the body, I have Scuba Steve over here, okay? Um, he's not really a diver, he's a Coca-Cola bottle. But um, anyway, this is a good representation of a diver underwater, okay? And what happens to you. So while we're down there, we are, well, automatically, let's back up a little bit. Automatically, we're walking around the planet right now with a certain amount of nitrogen in our blood. But it is a controllable amount. Our body knows what to do with it. It, is, it knows how to keep it at a continuous level that is safe for us. Okay, it's a byproduct. Um, when we're diving, that nitrogen is building up, just like shaking up old Scuba Steve here. Okay, and over time, more gas than our body knows what to do with is building up. The bubbles become larger, more plentiful, and so forth like that. So Steve here is going to be a bad diver. He's going to overstay that NDL, which means he oversaturated, built up way too much pressure of it in his body. He comes up too fast, he ignores his safety stop, and he just hits the surface right on. That is the equivalent of me taking this shaken up bottle and just popping the top off of it. Well, those gases are going to rush to get out. Uh, they're, they're wanting more space um, so that they can expand more when they go up. Okay, so they're going to cause a lot of damage on their way out. If I did it here, it would, you know, make me sticky and nasty. So we're not going to let Scuba Steve here make me all sticky and nasty. Um, so on this next dive, Steve does what he's supposed to. He does not overstay his NDL. However, you can't beat science. 
the saturation is still going to take place. You're still going to accumulate that nitrogen. But we're going to give you a way to deal with it by your math. Or in a computer, you know, it would have an alarm that says, hey, you're at 55 minutes. It is time to ascend. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Right? But he doesn't overstay. He comes up at a proper rate of speed. Okay? Because his chart told him he's reached his limit. He does his safety stop at a half an atmosphere, which is 15 foot, um, in order to give even more time, a safety lever, if you would, for those bubbles to shrink and start bleeding off through our exhalation and our tissues. And then he comes up at the appropriate time and stays out of the water for the appropriate amount of time. That is the same equivalent of me taking that same shaken up bottle and bleeding it off in a safe, controlled manner so it doesn't make a sticky mess, right? Don't make a sticky mess on the dive boat. Crew don't like cleaning that up. But that's exactly kind of in a visual way of what's happening to your body if you do or don't obey those rules, all right? So with that said, we're about to get into the equations. I just wanted to, you know, really kind of give you some visual ways of understanding exactly what all this math does for you and what your computer really can do for you to keep you safe. All right, so the next part we're going to discuss is the parts of the graph we'll be using as well as the parts of the chart and what they mean. Okay, it's finally time. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is explain the graph that we'll be using and the parts that are necessary in order to do the equation for a given depth and time. And then we'll go over the chart. All right, all right, so first. Understand that this graph is a representation of surface, meaning boat or shore, depending on what kind of dive you're doing. There's shore dives and then there's boat dives. So surface and then depth, meaning the depth that we're going to go to. Surface again, depth, surface. So that's what your graph is a representation of. Okay, now understand, while we're only going to be doing two dives, we're going to be doing the first dive and then a consecutive dive after, it does not mean that you are only locked into doing just two dives a day. It could mean that, depending on how long the dives are, but what that, is, uh, what that equates to is you can do as many dives in a day as you have time in your bucket, which we're gonna teach you how to find out how much time is left in your bucket. Um, however, just for time, and simplicity's sake, we're going to do it in a two-dive graph. Um, most boats that go out are two-tank boat dives. That's general across the industry. Um, but if you wanted to do a third, fourth, fifth dive, it wouldn't matter. All of them after the first one are going to be worked as that second one was. So you would just continue what we do here on to the third, fourth, fifth, and however many dives you do in that one day. Um, so I feel like once you have a grasp on this one, you're fine. You can just continue that on. You just translate the, the information over and over and over. All right. So first off, one of the necessary points of, uh, of data that we're going to need is our depth. Okay. So here will be depth. All right. And there will be a worksheet that is provided for you. Uh, let me grab this real fast. It is called the Repetitive Dive Worksheet um, that you can uh, work off of. It also has a legend at the top in order to explain exactly what these parts are. But with that said, let's move on. We've got our depth. We need that necessarily part of, of the data. Now you'll get all of this information in your dive briefing. Your guide or dive master or dive planner will give you what the mission is. So you're going to plan the dive and dive the plan. Okay, we're going to stick within those confines. Next piece of information that we're going to need is referred to as, I'm going to abbreviate a little bit more uh, later on, but A, B, T, meaning actual bottom time. That is the actual amount of time we're going to spend at this particular depth. Okay, now when we come up, we will have a pressure group that we are in. Remember, Scuba Bob, this will be the letter that tells you how full you are from that dive. All right. Then we're going to stay out of the water for a particular amount of time, you know, get something to drink, a little snack, 
dry off a little bit, sit in warm tropical sun, right? Um, and sit on the boat and uh, change out tanks so we can do another dive. And that is referred to as your surface interval, okay? Now the surface interval is going to have an effect on your pressure group for simplicity reasons so that I have a way of distinguishing what each one means. I refer to this as your modified pressure group. It's modified, right? Because we come out in a pressure group, the surface interval will now modify that pressure group. Next, we're going to have to have for our next dive, of course, what depth we will be going to as well as our actual bottom top. However, there's another piece of data that we need in order to calculate our time at this second depth, which we refer to as the RNT, residual nitrogen time. That is what that stands for. Now, once we have that, we can add these two together and we come up with our TBT, total bottom time. So while this is a phantom time, it does matter because it's the residual that's left over in your body from this first dive. So it's very important in order to keep us from crossing over into saturation diving or having to do a decompression stop. So it must be factored in on this dive, the third dive, fourth dive, fifth dive, all right, in order to keep us safe. Like I said, your computer does all of this many times over a second per foot. So you won't have to worry about all of this. But with that said, understand that if you ever are in, if you're doing it the analog way for your dives and you're not sure what all you need here, just always remind yourself on any consecutive dive, any repetitive dive after the first one, I have to keep up with my pet rat, R-A-T, right? R, residual, A, actual, T, total, all right? And that'll get you by. And just like before, if we're going to say that this was the final dive of the day, we would have a final pressure group. Now, this is just so that I can distinguish while we're doing this equation where we're at with our pressure groups. This doesn't mean it's actually your last out of the day as long as you have time left in the bucket and you do a, an appropriate surface interval in between each dive. All right. There's also another little piece of data that we're going to put on this one, but I'm not going to put it in every one because we're going to assume you are always going to be responsible, safe divers, and you're always going to factor in your safety stop, which we'll put right here is this little dotted line of three minutes at 15 feet. Okay? Always include your safety stop. However, it does not factor in to your actual bottom time. This is not calculated in. The reason being is, is because 15 feet is a half an atmosphere. We're in a one atmosphere. 33 feet is our second atmosphere. In between that is the 15 foot. And what is happening here, the reason we don't factor that into the equation, is because at 15 feet, instead of ripping the Band-Aid off per se and just going to the surface, we are staying in a half of an atmosphere so that our bodies can adjust to the release of the pressured environment. But at 15 feet, your body is actually um, expelling the nitrogen faster than it's accumulating. So we don't have to add that into our actual bottom time. All right. So the next thing that we're going to discuss is the parts of the chart over here. All right, let's go over the parts of our chart, uh, uh, our RDP card, in order to understand exactly uh, what all of the pieces mean. Now, understand that there's going to come one of the equations of the three that we're going to go over in this video that you'll need to flip it over, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that. Um, I found a simplified way in order to keep it all on the front for this first equation and not confuse you by having you flip back and forth like you may see in other demonstrations of this. So the first thing that you're going to see is that across the top here, you're going to see your depths, right? Ranging from 35 foot up to 140 feet. Now, what you will notice is after 35 foot, which you've crossed over into that next atmosphere, it goes in 10 foot increments. 
Okay, we need to be aware of that because in order to do our style of diving with this analog math, then we need to dive conservatively, which means that we need to round up, meaning that if you do a 42 foot dive, you need to round it up and log this as if it is a 50 foot dive. Sorry, that's where the computer can come in and uh, it can actually adjust per foot as opposed to what we can't do. It would be a very intricate equation um, in order to do that. So we have to graph in 10 foot increments. Just like if you did a 55 or a 56 foot dive, you would have to round it up to 60 foot. We couldn't log it as a 50 foot dive. It could get us into trouble later on down the road with consecutive dives. So down the left side of this grid, you're gonna see a letter corresponding with each line. Those are your pressure groups. And what you're gonna to see to the right of those is all these numbers in these boxes, okay? Um, with that, it's what each pressure group would translate over into the equal amount of time as we're doing our graph. So for example, if we just finished a 40 foot dive, or look, excuse me, let's back up. If we just did a 60 foot dive and then our next dive was going to be to 50 foot and I was in a pressure group of D after my 60 foot dive, then I would have the residual at 50 foot of 19 minutes. All right. So that's what that D would mean. Okay. So that's what they mean there. Now over on the right side, this other little half a pyramid here, you're going to see all of these numbers in these white boxes. Now what that means is when we come out of the water, like I said, from a 60 foot dive, and we note that we are in an O, okay? If we're in an O and we sit on the boat for an hour, we would find O over here, find the box that has an hour in it, which right here, if you can see, you have a box that has two times in it, 56 minutes to one hour and three minutes. Well, if the time that we're looking for is either one of the numbers or falls between that, that is the box we're looking for. So we would follow that straight down and our modified pressure group, if you'll remember that, is now an E. So we went from an O to an E and that's how we would do it. We would follow over with our current pressure group to find our time and then go straight down to find our modified or new pressure group, how much saturation of nitrogen we had actually bled off in that hour. Okay. Now, another little notable things that uh, I want to call out on this chart is first off, you're going to see this black box, which is your NDL or no decompression limit. At the bottom of each one of these columns is a black box with a time in it. That is your NDL. What that means is that is as long as you can stay at that depth and stay within recreational dive limits. After that time, you are crossing over into saturation diving or have to do a decompression stop. We want to avoid that. We will get into the emergency decompression procedures should you cross that, but those are bad because you're breaking the rule. Do not be the bad scuba Steve. Be a good scuba Steve and stay within those NDLs. You're also going to notice the grayed out areas, safety stop required. Well, Sean, the manual and you have instructed us that we must always do a safety stop after a dive. That is true. However, let me give a little bit more in depth or give you a, a, an easier way of understanding what the difference is here. So in these black or in these blue and white boxes that aren't shaded in, then if you had to bolt up to the surface in the event of an emergency, we're just gonna say that you were in a 50-50 chance of getting some form of DCS, whether it be mild ankle swelling, a headache, crick in your neck, shoulder, some mild form of DCS. You got about a 50-50 chance, all right? If it is in gray, which you'll notice from 100 foot and deeper, they're all in gray or black, or in the 90 foot and shallower dives, it's three, pressure groups before the NDL. So the three gray and the NDL, if you had to bolt to the surface in that situation, what you're doing is putting yourself probably in a 95 percentile chance uh, of getting some form of DCS all the way from mild to very severe. So we want to avoid that. Okay. But that's 
really, in a nutshell, what they are insinuating or telling you. So um, just be aware of that differences when you're doing your calculations. All right. Now we'll come back to this when we have to flip it over, and I'll explain how the back is kind of designed a little bit different in order to calculate surface interval and so forth. All right. So here we go. Time to start doing some dives. Um, now taking us back to our chart here. Where is my marker? All right. Uh, we've went over what all of the parts mean. We've went over our graph, our, our graph here, and our chart, and what the tables mean. So now we've just got to start logging these dives and learning the equation. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me, that would be highly recommended. It's going to help you really kind of key in. Uh, but um, we're going to do two dives, and uh, I'll kind of pause and explain exactly what we're doing along the way and then we'll progress and pick up speed as we go along because you're really going to get this. It's not going to be that difficult. All right, so we're going to say on our first dive, the dive master tells us that our first depth that we'll be going to today is we're going to keep these simple for now is 60 feet. So plug 60 feet into your depth on your graph. Our next part of data that we'll need is how long we're going to be on this dive. So our guide is letting us know that uh, it's going to be an estimated uh, 45 minutes. So I want to plug 45 minutes into my ABT. All right. Now, what we have to do is find out what pressure group we're going to finish this dive in. So we're going to come over to our chart. We're going to find our depth at the top where you were shown. And we're going to follow that down until we find our dive time, which is 45 minutes. Now, what you're going to see is you do not have a 45. What you have is 44 and 47. Remember what I said about being conservative. So we're not going to go with the 44. That could get us into trouble. We're actually going to jump up and go with the 47. Once we're on that 47, we're going to follow it over to the left. And we find that we finished this dive in a S, our pressure group of S. So just fill that in into the little slot there. It's asking for pressure group. Now, once this dive's completed, we're going to be on the boat for one hour. Now realize it's pretty standard that uh, surface intervals are going to be 45 minutes to an hour. It takes about that long in order to get everybody out of the water, uh, get unsuited, uh, change over to the gear to a new tank, get something to drink to hydrate. Hydration is important. Just because you're diving in water does not mean you will not dehydrate. Keep that in mind. So hydration is very important. Uh, you're actually sweating in that wetsuit a lot of the times. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we are good and hydrated for our next dive. Get a little snack, uh, something like that, just to get our energy level back up. You know, change batteries over in cameras. Uh, the crew's going to be unanchoring or unmooring the boat, moving to a new location, setting us up there, and brief for the dive. So it's going to take about 45 minutes to an hour. That's pretty common. All right. So what we need to find out is how did that surface interval affect that dive? So if we're in an S, Remember, we're going to find that over on this chart, and we're going to follow it over until we find one hour. All right, so we follow it over to the right, and we find a box that has 57 minutes to one hour and three minutes. That's what we're looking for. Then we're going to follow that straight down, and we find out that we are now in a modified pressure group of G. Okay, which doesn't mean a whole lot yet, but it is our modified. We have, remember Scuba Bob up here, we've went up to an S, filled up that compartment, and now we've bled back down to a G. All right. Now your dive master is going to brief for the next dive, and we're going to say, remember a rule that you should have already studied in the manual, we want to do our deepest dive first. So to keep this one safe, we're going to say that our next dive will be to 50 foot. So we're going to plug that into there, into our next depth, right? And on this dive, we're going to hopefully stay for another 45 minutes, all right? It's, it, 45 minutes is a decent dive. You could be plus or minus. In the beginning, you're going to burn more air. Your dives are going to be shorter. As you become more experienced and calmer underwater, your dives can increase. So anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour is a pretty decent dive, right? But we have another 
factor to worry about on this, remember, we have our residual nitrogen time that we have to account for. We're going to take our depth and our pressure group, and we're going to find out how much residual is left over. And this is how we do it. Instead of flipping the card over, what I'm going to have you do instead is find the depth that you want to dive. You're going to find the pressure group you are currently in, your modified pressure group, and we're just going to follow those fingers until those uh, boxes intersect and we'll pull that time out. In this instance, at 50 foot, a residual of G is equal to 26 minutes. Now, let's put in what our safety limit is. At 50 foot, if we follow it all the way down to the bottom, the black number, we find that that is an 80, meaning we can only stay a total of 80 minutes at 50 feet. So when we add these two together, which is what we're about to do, they cannot exceed 80 minutes, all right, in order to be a safe dive. If they do, then we need to modify something here. So we need to either um, stay out of the water longer or shorten our actual bottom time. So we could take that down to 40 minutes, for example. Or we could stay out of the, out of the water for one hour and 15 minutes to increase our bleed off. Okay, all right, so if we add these together, we come up with 71. Well, 71 is less than 80. This is a safe plan. We can go with this dive, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, as you do these um, more and more, when you first start doing them alone, this is where people first start running into their problem. This is pretty basic and simple. You have one time to worry about, which is your actual bottom time. Now we've moved into our consecutive dive, and we have three numbers here staring at us. We've got our TBT, but when people go to find out what their final pressure group is, it throws them for a little bit of a loop because they'll stare at these numbers thinking, what am I supposed to do with those again? Is there more to do with them? No, there isn't. So once you get your TBT, I want you to forget about these. If you need to put an X on them, whatever you need to do to make it simple for you, just remember, they're gone now. They mean nothing. We've gotten the data we need, which is our TBT, total bottom top. And then we're just going to do this like we did the first dive, which is depth to time gives us pressure group. That simple. Depth to time will give us pressure group. So again, 50 foot, follow it down to find 71. Now this is in the gray. Remember what we discussed about the gray, your safety stop required is not an option in any way. You, you could hurt yourself here. And we follow over to the left to find out that we finished this boat trip in a V. It really is that simple. And I know it looks complicated with all my little notes and all of that, but we're going to simplify it even more when we do another one together. All right? But just remember, it's depth to time equals pressure group, subtracting our surface interval to get a modified pressure group. That pressure group now, coupled with the depth we will be diving, gives us our residual coupled with our actual added together, remember this is plus, gives us our total bottom time, which must, must not exceed our NDL, no decompression limit, or the black box number. Okay, well, this time we're going to do something a little different, though. I'm going to plug in the data for you, and you are going to have two or three minutes to work the equation before I jump in. Um, we're going to find out where you are and uh, take the training wheels off and let you work this a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a dive to, we'll say, 65 feet. Sound good? All right. And on this dive, we're going to stay for 35 minutes. Okay. You'll be out of the water for one hour and 30 minutes this time. The boat crew lets you know, hey, we've got a great dive site. There's a wreck on it. We want to take you guys to it, but it's going to take a little bit longer to move the boat and get there. So uh, we'll be out of the water a little longer this time. 
but the dive's going to be at 48 feet. And we're going to need about 40 minutes in order to see the whole wreck, in order to navigate it. So this is your plan. All right, remember all your rules. And uh, remember how we have to be conservative. And I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to work this on your own. And then I'll jump in and give you the answer and you can see how you did. Okay, if you need a little bit more time, just pause the video and finish working the equation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this out for you. All right. Now, what's our rule? We have to be conservative. So 65 becomes 70 foot, 48 becomes 50. All right. Let's stick to our rules. Now, 70 foot for 35 minutes puts us in a Q. If you got Q, you are on target. You're doing great. Now, Q. Let's come over to our graph. Out of the water for one hour and 30 minutes. Follow straight down. We are in a C. All right. C is going to be our residual, but we need to turn it back into a time. So 50 foot in C gives us 17 minutes. Add those two together. We come up with 57 minutes. Now, what is our target time for 50 foot? Let's make sure this is a safe dive and we don't have to modify anything. 80 minutes. So if we can stay 80, but with our residual, we're only up to 57. This is a safe dive, right? So we are good to go. All right. Now let's go ahead and complete this out. 50 foot for 57 minutes gives us a R. So we finished this in an R. Now, without all of my extra notes and so forth, you see this is actually quite simplified um, a graph and an equation. It's not really that difficult. And if that's what you come up with, you did great, man. You're doing just exactly as I knew you would. I feel good about it. You should feel good about it. In our next session, or next session, section, excuse me, we're going to be finding our surface interval, okay? We're going to find out how long we have to stay out of the water in order for this to make a safe dive. Um, and then we'll finish up and wrap up with the emergency deco procedures should you overstay your NDL, all right? That's all that's left. So we're getting there, folks. We are getting there, all right? Okay. Um, we're coming into third base and getting ready to round for home. Um, but this is uh, the surface interval. This is how we're going to find our surface interval. I already have our dive data, our plan of what we uh, are going to do for these two dives. But we don't know yet how long we need to stay out of the water. I will tell you that 45 minutes and 55 minutes, if you came straight up from a 60-foot dive for 45 minutes, and only we're on the boat long enough to change tanks, which could be anywhere on how fast you are at assembling gear from two minutes to three or four. That is not a sufficient amount of surface interval in order for 55 minutes of 50 foot to be a safe dive with your residual included from your 60 foot. So this is how we do it. Now, the first piece of data that we must have in order to calculate our surface interval is the pressure group that we are currently in. So 60 foot for 45 minutes. We need to find out what that is. 60 foot, 45 minutes. Remember, conservative. I'm rounding up to 47, not going down to 44. We find that we are in an S. Now, this is where we have to flip our card over in order to find out um, what we need to get to. And I'm going to show you exactly what the difference is between the front of this card and the back. So flip that card on over for me. And you're going to see that now your pressure groups are along the top as opposed to being down the left side. Your depths, which were across the top, are now where your pressure groups were down the left side. You're also going to see that with each depth, as you go to the right, there are actually now two lines of numbers. One white which stands for your residual or surface time. And then one blue that stands for what time is left underwater. So since 
we want to go to 50 foot for 55 minutes on our second dive, what we need to do is find our depth, follow the blue line, and look at the times until you find the time that you need. So 55 minutes. There again, conservative. We do not have a 55. What we have is 54 and 56. We're going to go up to the 56, right, and then follow straight up. And we find that we need to be in an F. So we have got to stay out of the water long enough to bleed from an S down to an F. Okay, I think you can see where I'm going with this. It's not real difficult. Okay, so now we're going to flip the card back over to its front side. We're going to go over to our surface interval chart here. We're going to take our current pressure group. We're going to take our second finger and put it on what we need to be in, which is an F. And we're going to follow those fingers until they intersect. And we're going to pull the top number out of that box. In this case, to go from an S to an F, we must be out of the water for a minimum amount of time of one hour and four minutes. Okay, that is how we find our surface interval. Now I'm going to do one more with you, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because as long as you've got the foundation of the first equation, this is just a slight modification and it's really easy to do. Okay, a little pause there to save some time uh, getting our grid set back up. We're going to do one more surface interval and then we'll move on to the final equation. Um, so here we go. Our first dive is going to be to 70 foot. We're going to stay on this dive for the plan would be 35 minutes. We'll do a second dive to 60 foot, right? And we need to be able to stay on this dive to accomplish our task, mission, or want for 45 minutes. Now, I will tell you. We have to have a surface interval here, but how long of a surface interval? So this is, again, how we do it quickly. We need our first pressure group. 70 foot for 35 minutes puts us in a Q. All right, let's flip that card over and find out what we need to be in for a 45 minute dive to 60 foot. So 60 foot, Follow the blue line to 45. Well, there again, we don't have a 45. We got a 44 or a 49. We got to go with the 49. We need to go all the way back down from a Q to an A to make this a safe dive. Okay, so let's find out how long that will take us. From Q all the way over to A. We need to be out of the water for two hours and 31 minutes. Good long surface interval, right? So you could see if we didn't factor that out or figure it out, we could have got ourselves into real trouble. Again, that is why the math is so important. Uh, whether it's by computer or analog, it should be done, okay? Just to keep you safe. So again, that is how you find the surface interval. The next uh, equation we're going to do quickly is uh, finding how long do we have left or how long can we do our second dive for. Uh, there again, just moving the X around. It's not real difficult. And uh, we'll get that set up and then we'll just tear right into it. Okay, future divers, here we go. We're about to slide into home. Uh, just about done. Um, now we're going to find out how much time we have on our last dive. Uh, so we're going to do our first dive and we're going to plan the second one, but we want to maximize that dive and find out how long we can stay down to the minute because we really want to get all of the time down there we can. Now, uh, before I do this, I also want to throw in there um, that you will see that we have been doing a deep dive and then a little shallower. Uh, I do want to throw in there that you don't necessarily have to do it that way. For example, on this first dive, we're going to do 60 foot. Now, we have a couple options on this second dive. Remember, deepest dive first, deepest dive first. You're going to hear that rule a lot. But it does not mean that you can't do another 60 foot dive 
on that same dive site that you just did a dive on. Let's say we went on this dive and it was a great dive. We want to go down and do another one because there's that much there to see and do and photograph and so forth. We can do another 60 foot dive. We just can't exceed that first dive's depth. That's the important thing. So either, either it needs to be the equivalent of or shallower. That's what we're looking for. But we're not going to do that in this case. I just wanted to let you know out there. And uh, just in case you're curious, could you do another 60 foot dive? Do the same dive site twice. Yes, you can. You just need to be sure of what time you have left. So on this first dive, we're going to do um, a 50 minute dive at 60 foot. Okay. We're going to be out of the water for one hour. And then our second dive is going to be to 50 foot. All right. But we don't know how long we can stay. We're going to figure that out. That's what this equation is. Now, remember, nothing too difficult. We're just moving the X. Remember, it first started out that we were just looking for what our pressure groups were, what we finished in, that it was safe dives. Then we went to moving the X, the unknown, to surface interval. Now we're going to move the unknown to ABT, actual bottom time. That's what we're going to be looking for. And this is how we do it. So let's work this first dive just as normal. 60 foot for 50 minutes. Oh, let me move over. 50 minutes would put us in a U. If you got U, you have gotten this, man. You are, you are a scholar at this point at this. U out of the water for one hour. All straight down. And we find that our modified pressure group is H. That is also our residual for the next dive. Okay. Now remember, we're looking for how long we can stay down. First, we need to calculate our residual, which 50 and H is 28 minutes left. So our residual, R, is 28 minutes. We know that we've lost 28 minutes from what our, what our complete time at that depth would be. Okay which is 80 minutes. We cannot exceed 80 minutes. Now this is where you have two different options in order how, how to find out what your uh, remaining time is. I'm gonna show them both. First, we're going to do the analog way, which is just straight out math. We know we can stay 80 minutes total. Subtract your residual from that, right? So eight from 10 would be two. This is a seven now, so five. So we know that we can stay on this dive for 52 minutes. See, that wasn't hard. And that would be our actual, and that's our T, remember our pet we're at, actual over here. So we know we have 52 minutes left on this dive and we're not gonna exceed our NDL, all right? But there's another way to do it with the card. It doesn't matter. It's apples and oranges. It's really a preference. Which one do you want to do? For me, they both take about the same amount of time. It's not really a big deal. I usually wind up just doing it that way when I did it. Now, this is how you would do it with the card. We're going to flip this card back over to its backside. Oh, went a little too far there. Let's go here. There we go. Now, remember what I told you about the two lines? right, that are with each depth. Remember what I said, the white one was your residual time. Residual time. So we want to take 50 foot and we'll follow that white number over until we find what our residual was, which is H. Or you could just say 50 foot H, make them intersect, find your 28. Now look underneath that in the blue. What does that say? 52 minutes, right? 52 minutes. So our math's solid, and so is the, the chart. So is our, our card. It doesn't matter which way you want to do it. They're both acceptable. They both come out to the same answers. It's, it's really just a preference. I, I don't really mind which way you do it. You shouldn't either. Uh, just go with what feels comfortable and what you can remember. That's always the one you can do is the right one, right? As long as it comes out to the appropriate safe uh, answer, which in this case is not exceeding 80 minutes. That's how easy that one is. Uh, if you need to back it up and watch it again, please feel free to do so. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's really a simple equation. And by now, you should really have a good firm grasp on how you can just move the X around to find the unknown variable, right? 
All right. The last section we're going to do is close this off, and uh, I'm going to go over the emergency deco procedures should you extend or overshoot your NDL by a, a certain amount of time. There's two procedures. Uh, we're going to go over that, and then we'll wrap this up and call it a day. All right. Here we go. Okay, folks. Um, hopefully that really helped, and uh, uh, you got it. If not. Um, Feel free to uh, ask as many questions as you need to during the class. I want you to fully grasp this. And by all means, uh, if you have an appreciation for this and just like, I really don't want to do this math on my dive trips and my vacations. I want to enjoy my time. We still really highly recommend you just getting on a dive computer. It's going to take care of all of this and so much more for you to keep you safe. Uh, we can't really, um, really drive home enough about how much we believe in computers and how worry-free they can make diving for you and enjoyable, right? Who wants to do a lot of math on their vacation, right? Anyway. We're going to go over the um, DECO emergency procedures. Should you exceed your NDL um, by any amount of time? Now, these are this is this is a backup plan. Should you make a mistake, I would like to bring up that the running out of air, uh, overstaying your NDL, not doing you know a long enough surface interval. All of these are preventable mistakes and their diver fault. If you run out of air, it's your fault. You're not watching your air. If you go eight minutes or more without looking at your gauge, you're asking for problems down the road. You're asking to get yourself into trouble. Uh, if you don't do your math, you're asking for trouble as far as blowing your NDL, staying over your allotted amount of time. Um, same thing with this. If you do go over, um, getting yourself into this emergency decompression procedures is an error by the diver. It is nobody else's fault but yours. You're in control of this. Okay. So with that said, this is on the back side of the RDP card. Uh, I've zoomed it in here in order, uh, hopefully you can see it, uh, in order for you to follow along with me. But as you'll see, uh, emergency decompression. If you blow an NDL, and remember your NDL is that black box number, 50 foot, 80 feet, 60 foot, 55 minutes. If you overshoot that by one to five minutes, it's bad, but not totally horrible. Um, you have a mandatory eight minute stop at 15 feet. Once that is done, uh, you get back up on the boat. You should probably breathe on some oxygen for a few minutes. Now, what I will tell you is that no reputable dive company would leave port without emergency gear on board, meaning a first aid kit, you know, radio, of course, uh, and an oxygen tank. Scuba boats, scuba ships should not leave port without a oxygen tank on board. If this if the company you're using does not look out for your safety well enough that they have these emergency pieces of equipment on board, it might be time to look for another company to use, right? Because they don't have your best interests uh, pushed forward. So one to five minutes, eight minute mandatory safety stop at 15 feet. Once the diver surfaces, consider breathing on oxygen. Uh, the number one treatment for all diving emergencies or injuries is oxygen. It, it, if it can't help, it won't hurt anything. It can help to prevent shock as well as start sweeping the excess nitrogen out of your system a lot faster. Okay. So once you get back up on board, you must not go back into the water for a minimum of six hours. You should be monitored by a dive buddy, if not um, a medical professional. You should be monitored over that six hours for progression of DCS symptoms. Um, so do not go back into the water for six hours minimum um, and watch for any DCS symptoms as small as a crick in the shoulder, crick in your neck, a uh, headache on one side of your head, uh, anything like this, swollen hand, wrist, ankle, foot, these kind of things. Start watching for that um, pain, uh, cramping, any kind of uh, joint immobility. Now, this is bad, but this next one's really horrible, and it would be uh, uh, the diver's fault. But if you blow an NDL by six minutes, and I put infinity, and what I mean by infinity is just when your tank runs out of air. I'm pretty positive once that tank runs out of air, you're going to surface, right? So six minutes to out of air, then a 15-minute stop 
is mandatory at 15 feet, air allowable. I'll explain that in a minute. But once you do surface and get on the boat, you should, you, you really, it's imperative, get on an oxygen tank uh, and breathe just 100% oxygen to start getting that saturation down. Uh, when you get back to port, I would seek out uh, a physician in order to check me for symptoms and signs of, of DCS, the bends, and start watching for that. You do not go back into the water for a minimum of 24 hours and should be monitored in that 24 hours for DCS, all right? Starting to understand why this math is really a critical thing, right? Um, but what I mean by 15 minutes at 15 foot air allowing, if you overshot your NDL by six minutes or more, the chances are you're not going to have a full 15 minutes of air left in your tank to do a 15 foot stop for 15 minutes. So you're probably going to have to surface without doing that full safety stop, which is bad. That's why I also really push for you to get on the boat, tell the captains you've overshot and that you would really like to get on the oxygen tank and start desaturating yourself all right so just keep these in mind um, how's the best way for this to never happen do your math wear your computer pay attention to them um, do not overstay your NDL it is your fault when you do that it is a completely preventable accident running out of air totally preventable but when it does happen it's the divers fault all right all right so in closing what I'm gonna say is Hopefully um, this has all become clear to you and you understand the importance of doing your math. Um, we would like to uh, have many years of diving for you and uh, join us on trips and have some fun and be around for a long time to share a lot of great stories. Uh, but do understand you cannot be complacent. This is safety equipment. Consider it safety equipment in order to uh, log that saturation and keep you safe. All right. Well, that concludes our lesson today. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it and we'll see you soon.